Okay, so a lot of it is is that fear bit, right? Yeah. So it's fear fear of jumping out. How do you coach people across that chasm? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. I, I'd start first and foremost by talking about the two innate fears that everyone is born with. Do you know what they are? Uh, no. Our fear of judgment, I would say, because that's one of my fears. That's one of them, right? But the ones that we're born with, per what scientists say, is the fear of falling and the fear of loud mm. noises, right? Oh, really? So the fear, like you hear a boom, it doesn't matter how courageous you are, you're going to react <laughs> like, oh, what the, you know, right? So I, and then so when, when we go over the fear of a person, I go over a couple of acronyms. One is I do feel, and these acronyms I didn't make up, they've been around forever. And the giants that are in my industry that are amazing, they use these acronyms as well. And fear stands for false evidence appearing real. That's mm. the majority of what people do. They focus on what they don't have, the relationships they don't have, the network they don't have, the skills they don't have, the equipment they don't have, the money they don't have, well, I'm just going to go back to my job tomorrow, right? But if you focus on the things it is, um, and, th and let me also say this is no easy feat to jump out like this, is, is really the fact that you must believe in you. And I teach this to my nonprofit camps. It's just what I call the Coach V belief code that says, and I say, repeat after me. So, Andrew, act like you're my client, okay? Sure. Say, I believe in me. I believe in me. Say what I believe. What I believe. Will be. Will be. Say respect all. Respect all. Fear nothing. Fear nothing. I will not be bullied. I will not be bullied. And the bully will not be me. And the bully will not be me. I believe in me. I believe in me. And what I believe will be. And what I believe will be. Most of the time, our fear comes from a self-conversation -con of self-doubt. Mm. of focusing on what if I fail the things that my mom and dad will say my brothers and sisters would have told me they told me so my cousin and my aunties were like why did you leave that amazing job to do something no one in our family has ever done mm. versus positive affirmations were like well if he's for us who can be against us <laughs> yeah right as yeah. I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy, thy, th thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's just not for church. That's for <laughs> entrepreneurs. That's for living your Amen. dream. Right. But what most yeah. people do is their self conversation is just defeating, let alone the haters. Right. My uncle was like, hey, coach, hey, uncle, hey, I heard you left Boise State. Where are you going? I'm going to be a life coach, bro. You don't need to be a life coach. You need one life coach and go back to your job. <laughs> right. So not only are you going to have the haters and the critics and the people that genuinely care about you and your own interests, your self-interest, your welfare and well-being, they're going to tell you no way, right? But only you, because you are the key. You, me, and we are our own key. For things to change, we must change. And if we don't change, nothing changes. But if we do change, everything changes. If we do get better, everything gets better. We don't get what we want. We get what we work for and believe in and the things it is that we want and will chase in terms of our success. Now, those things will chase and come after us. That is the law of grace. That is the law of blessings. And that is the law that these people also call that don't believe in faith and religion. They call the law of attraction. And attraction. this stuff doesn't happen because Coach V says so. This is what life tells us all. Man. So this is another fear and I love, I love, man, I just feel like going and running at a brick wall or something right now, but this is another fear, the fear of expectation. When you mm. put yourself out as a life coach, many or as an expert, because if you're pr providing content, you have to provide content as an expert or a thought leader. Mm -hmm. The expectation that follows with providing content, how do you deal with that? Oh yeah, that's, that's a good one. Uh, 
That's a good one. The expectation is, uh, so there's, there's certain things. And if you watch every single video, they're going to tell you this. Um, if you're trying to be a thought leader and you're trying to jump a YouTube channel, then you look at every other video that's within your niche and you make videos that people are like that because the algorithm is set to where whatever is the most searched thing will have the most traffic. Mm. Okay. So is that starting to answer your question? Uh, yeah, but actually as a life coach who's mentoring other people in life, the yep, expectation yep. that your life has to be, it's kind of like the Christian thing or the, you know, like if I put myself out as a Christian, the misconception is that I've got it all together when yeah, I'm a Christian perfect. because I, I absolutely yeah. don't have it together. <laughs> That's right, brother. I mean, so one of the things that is the reason why people connect with me is because on the social media platforms, these are usually uh, the numbers of why they connect with me or the facts. Uh, they've heard me speak live. They've been around me in person and they watch me on social media to see if the stuff it is that I talk about actually reflects in reality. But really, I am not the key for other people's success. I just talked mm. about it and alluded to that. I tell every client, repeat this after me. I am the key. I am the key. When I change, everything changes. When, yeah. So really, as a success coach, it's coming down to the questions. Mm. So here's the number one question for most people it is that are lacking success. Why is it that you know what you should be doing, but you don't do it? How many people do that every day? How many people know that they should be not eating more fried chicken and take a walk around the block and get some cardio instead, oh. and stay away from the soda, stay. So there are certain things that you just need someone else. Not everybody, mm. but they need somebody to go call you on your bullshit yeah. and hold you accountable. And then I tell them, hey, these success coaching sessions, the only time that I am done is when you tell me these two measurables, I am going to make $10,000 more and they send me an email that show that on their profit margin. And I'm going to take my wife out to a date night twice in the next two months. And they don't text me with a selfie that they're at a restaurant. Game's over. Because if you're not going to do it and be accountable to me, that means you'll never be accountable to yourself. As a success wow. coach, I think all success coaches, what they're really trying to figure out with their clients or the group it is that they're coaching or working with are what are the questions? What are the questions I need to ask to really find out what this person needs to focus on or is missing? The majority of the time, it's either some, some type of self-belief issue, uh, discipline issue, or actually being punctual and doing the stuff it is that you agreed to do. Those are like three things that are just out, out the wall. The, the main things for the highest level people it is that I coach is they have no life balance because they don't design their calendar. They allow the job and the career to outline their calendar and they fail to put in their holidays, what they're doing at Christmas, what they're doing at Easter, what they're doing for Valentine's. They even fail to book a reservation to have Valentine's with their spouse because their job goes... When is the kid's birthdays? When is the anniversary? When is the spouse's birthday? When you put that in first, that's when you start to get this perception of work-life balance. But they fail to design their life. Then second, they'll design and put it on the damn calendar, but they won't do it. Mm -mm -mm. Right? So those are the, some examples of what I face with some amazing people that are just needing a little something. Now, Andrew, I, I must tell you that when I first started doing this, I thought I could coach anybody. I could motivate and inspire anybody. But then I figured out really quickly, I don't want to deal with everybody because I don't yeah. want to deal with rookies. I want to deal with championship folks that are already in their industry and working at a very high level. And then all I do as a championship coach is just help them take that extra 10%, extra find, find that extra 10% of time with the kids with the wife and then so that they are not with me to, so that I give them the motivation, but they become self-motivated, self-inspired and self-belief in themselves. That's the mission. And at some point people are like, Hey, so what, what time is our session next month? I was like, Oh, you don't have a session anymore. You're done. Really? Oh, yeah. They'll pay me money. They, they still want to pay and be my client. And I was like, Bro, it's time for you to fly. You know, with this mm. coaching, I can help somebody else 
you need to go, well, coach, can I just hook up with you, you know, uh, every other, every other quarter then for like once every three months. I'm like, sure, we can do that. But you need to stop studying. You need to stop talking, watching Gary V, Coach V, Tony Robbins <laughs> videos, and you need to go out there and start acting, right? Right, Andrew? I mean, you got to start acting because <laughs> yeah, exactly. we all know. And we talked about this in our first call. Faith, mm. success, and love are nouns that work better as verbs because without mm. action, faith, success, and love are just words. So at some point... Or what scripture says, what, what does scripture say? Faith without works, dead. dead. So I didn't make this stuff up. This has been around forever. But then also it makes sense. And that's what I've experienced. So that's what I try to bring to my clients, brother. Awesome, man. So I just, so you were at Boise State for, for a number years. of years. And eight years. Eight yep. years. And then you coached at UCLA, was it? You, no, I, I was a volunteer at UC Davis. So I was oh, only in two places. Yeah, I played at UC Davis. Um, that's a Division two school. UCLA, that's the Pac-10. Boise State is, was in yeah. the WAC Conference. They're all the big boys. That's the Division one level. I played Division two football, and I started my volunteer career at UC Davis. Boise State, you were coaching, right, though? Yes. Also? Yes. And you had a huge success rate, I, re I read. Yeah, yeah, we want we we want a ton of championships. Let me see if I can grab this real quick. Uh, here in the states, every time you win a championship, you get a ring, uh, Andrew. So yeah. you know, we were we were able to to win to win a couple rings here and there. Holy, um, two, four, six, eight, nine. Yeah, I think so, something like that. So yeah, we 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 were able to formulate a way to be successful, not one year, but two or two years. And that's what I tried to bring into a company or an organization that I work with is how do you pattern and come up with a life process that gives you every probability to succeed according to your goals or your pyramid or what it is that is the mission and the vision of a company because of the fact that I've experienced that. The hard part, just like jumping, is wondering whether my teachings about life would translate to business. Mm. See, millionaires don't really give a shit what you know. And most people don't care what you know until they know how much you care. But then you start flashing some bling, then yeah. they go, okay, wait a minute. Now that <laughs> equalizes the playing field between me and a millionaire. Because I'm not a millionaire. I don't pretend to be one. And I'm working on my way to be there. But the, the, the life fulfillment, the joy, peace, happiness, and love is really always the core. That's the reason why we won at Boise State. That's the mm. reason why I have succeeded in life. I get the fact that we need money. I already alluded to that. Nothing is more suffocating than not having money. I grew up poor in this country. I ate government cheese and government bread. I was 76 pounds from 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. Here, that's 11, 12, and 13 years old. I was sticking bones because we had no money. I get all that. But if you can get this piece, mm. the money and the success will come chasing you, whether that's in football, in business, on a radio show, on your podcast that's going to be global and worldwide. If you chase the things that really move the dial and move mm. the needle in humanity, like joy, peace, happiness, fulfillment, and love. So the videos that you do on drama, uh, people shaking their ass, and um, all the fights that are going out there, that'll get you more views. That'll get you more views. That's not mm. the juice of life. That's not the that's juice. Right. Man, I'll bring it to a close with this question, um, Coach V. What's your mission in life? Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, so really, my mission in life has always been the same, and it's written down in terms of my mission statement, is to make sure that I love my family wholly and I live the purpose that I have been anointed to live in this life. And should I do that? At the end of my life, I will not question if the people it is that I love knew I love them and that I would never question 
did my life matter on this planet? That I did something for someone other than myself because of the fact that I was in a position to and I did it. It's beautiful, man. And, I, I, you know, I'm not sure that many of us have such clarity around our mission in life. And, the, and that's really the purpose behind why I wanted to start this podcast, because I know Pacific people, especially Polynesians, Melanesians, Micronesians, have so much to offer the world. Mm. If only we can design our life according to the design of God and get to our deathbed and think, I did what I was called to. Now it's mm. time to go home. Mm. So I really appreciate your insights, man. Do you have anything else you want to say before we wind up? I really appreciate your time, your wisdom, your discernment, and your insights. Oh, first and foremost, man, it, it is my pleasure and an honor uh, to you not know my story, not even meet me, kind of feel my vibe. We've never met in person. And to have it, uh, to be um, requested to be on your show, just hugely grateful. And the passion that we have, and you said the words like design. If you don't design your life, if you, me, and we don't design our life, we leave ourselves susceptible to be designed by other people for their goals, mm -hmm. by the politics uh, that are divisive in, on, on the entire planet. We leave ourselves to be designed by the mission of our company and so I would leave on this, and it's a poem. And it really says this, and it says um, that if you think you're beaten, you are. And if you think you dare not, you don't. And if you'd like to win but think you can't, it's almost certain you won't. And if you think you'll lose, you've lost, for out of the world we find. You see, success begins with a person's will a champion state of mind. If you think you're outclassed, you are, because you have to think high to rise. You have to be sure of yourself before you can ever win a prize, because life's battles don't always go to the strongest woman or man. But sooner or later, the one who wins is the one who thinks they can. God bless you. God bless you all that's on this show. One love and mad respects always. It's your boy, Coach V, here out here in California, USA. Love y'all and God bless. God bless you, man. Malo Alpito, I will have all your links and all, your, all, your, all the things associated to you on our show notes. What a way to go out, man. I don't think there's going to be a better outro in the podcast <laughs> than that. And it just so happened, it just so happened the rigs were here. And, and went, yeah, man, I appreciate the opportunity to close out, brother. All right. Thanks, Coach V. Really appreciate it, bro. Appreciate you, brother. Anytime. Okay. One love. Thank, Peace. Thank you, man.